Good evening students. I welcome you all to this session. Today we are going to learn a story of your English book moments. The name of the story is Weathering the Storm in Irsama. Weathering the Storm in Irsama it is written by Hars Monday. Okay, it is written by Hars Monday. So before going to the lesson, let us know something about the writer. So let us know something about Hars Monday. So who is Hars Monday? Hars Monday is a social activist, author, at the same time a former officer of the Indian Administrative Services. Okay, he has found he has found and led many campaigns in the interest of social causes such as legal justice for survivors of uh, communal violence, then the lead rights, the right to information, next rehabilitation of the street children and homeless people also. And uh, he services uh, as director in the Center of for Equity Studies and is a special commissioner to the Supreme Court in the rights to food case. He has taught uh, at many prestigious Indian as well as international institutions. So in all the way, he is a very knowledgeable person we can say. So let us discuss the story. First, we will go with the introduction. Okay. The story gives an account of the storm that hit the coastal town of Irsama in Odisha state in the year 1999. So a young boy, a young boy whose name is Prasant, faced the fury of the storm and reached his village. The details of how he worked hard to help the villagers and overcome the devastations caused by the storm inspired that all the things that inspire us to have courage and positive approach towards life. Okay, so now we are going to discuss the lesson with paragraph watch. So a courageous character, a brave character we can see whose name is Prasant. So Prasant was a native of a village in the coastal state of Odisha. On 27, 27 October, okay, on 27 October 1999, he was on a visit to a friend Irasma, which is a small town in Odisha and a block headquarter in Jagatpur district. And his village, his own village was at a distance of 18 kilometers from Irsa. He had lost his mother seven years ago. Okay. That day, a strong storm, a strong storm gathered in the evening. Furious wind accompanied by the continuous rain lashed the place. Screams could be heard as trees got uprooted and destroyed the houses as they fall on them. The water flowed with gusts and swept away houses that came in its way. Everywhere, everywhere it is filled with water. So we can say there was neck deep water in his friend's house. As his house was a pakka house, it was able to resist the strong winds which blew at the speed of 350 kilometers per hour. 350 kilometers per hour. His friend's family was uh, terrorized because in the middle of the night, they all were in a different kind of mood. They, they all were terrified. They all were terrified with the condition of the earth, with the condition of that nature. Trees had fallen on the houses, it uh, damaging the roofs and walls of the building. So all, all the people, they all, most of the people, they washed away. And the people, those who have the life, they are, they were also in danger. Better they will lead the life or they will lose the life. As far as, as far as Prasant could see, he saw a cover of muddy brown water. 
There were the remains of sacred houses surrounded by the water, dead bodies of animals and human beings also floated in the water. Huge trees had fallen and were floating around. Two coconut trees had fallen on the roof of their house. Initially, they thought that the trees had damaged the roof and the walls of the houses. But later, they realized that this proved to be beneficial for them. As they were trapped in the house, as they were trapped in the, on the roof of the house, they ate the raw coconuts from these trees and saved themselves from dying due to the starvation. Okay? For the next two days, they spent the next two days on the rooftop. Everyone was so scared that they sit together in a group. It was very cold and the continuous rain was away present tears. He was worried about his family members. Maybe he could have lost another family members and would be in grief over the loss of the loved one once again. This thought worried Prasant whether the, all the family members would be in good condition or not. The rain stopped after two days. It seemed to Prasant that the two days time was as long as the duration of two years. This shows that it was very difficult for him to pass the time as the worry about his families. The worry about his families being worried him. The rain had stopped. The water was uh, receding gradually, although it was dangerous to go out. He didn't waste any more time and he just went out. He just went out and his family friends requested Prasant to stay back. The family, family friends, his friends, everyone, everyone requested Prasant to stay back. But he didn't listen to anyone else. Only he left to know about his family members. So with the help of a long stick, with the help of a long stick, Prasant started the 18 kilometers journey back home. As he passed through the flood water, the journey got inscribed in his mind forever. He had to use the stick to guide him and find the path, find the road where the water is shallower. At some places, at some places, uh, the water was waist deep and his pace slowed down. At some places, he lost a track of the road and had to swim to save himself from drowning. After some time, he was relieved as he got the company of two friends who along with their uncle were returning to their village. All of them proceeded together. So you can imagine the journey of that time. As the group, group proceeded, group means Prasant, his two friends and their uncle. As the group proceeded, they got to see horrible scenes. They had to push dead bodies of human beings and animals, which were being swept around the current of the water. As they crossed the villages, not even a single house was seen. As Prasant's fear grew, he wept loudly. He was sure that his family members would not have survived in this disaster. When Prasant, when Prasant reached his village, his village name is Kalikuda. Kalikuda, okay. He became numb. You cannot use your surprised. He became numb on seeing the remains of the, his houses. The belongings were scattered in the water and some things hung on the branches of the trees just above the uh, flood water. He decided to look for his family at the center set 
which is led by the Red Cross Society. So at the Red Cross Society, he first saw his maternal grandmother. He first saw his maternal grandmother. She appeared weak, but was very glad to see that Prasant was alive. She rushed to him with her arms open and her eyes full of tears. It was a miracle for her as the family had thought that Prasant would not have survived the storm. As Prasant, extended family came to know that he had come. They gathered around him and used him in relief. Prasant saw that everyone was worried and injured also. He met his siblings, his brothers and sisters, his uncles and aunts. The very next morning, the very next morning, Prasant realized that he had to get over his emotions and take charge of the situation. The huge crowd of around 2,000, 2,500 people in the shelter was full of sadness as they had lost everything in the storm. 86 people had been killed by the super cyclone. They had been at the shelter for the last four days. They had been eating raw coconuts, nothing else. But now these were insufficient for the large number of people also. That time Prasant, Prasant was very young at the age of only 19, decided to lead the crowd of people of his village. He formed a group of villagers including the elders and the youth. They planned to force the local merchants to give them the stock of grains and rice to feed the people. The group succeeded and they swam through the floods to get food from the, for the crowd. No one was bothered by the fact that the rice was getting rotten because they were starved and were ready to eat even the rooting rice also. The branches of the broken trees were used to kindle a fire as they were wet. Burning a fire was an adverse task, a difficult task. It was a slow fire but they managed to cook the rice on it. The survivors ate a meal after four days. The second task of the group was to clean the shelter. They removed all the garbage, dead bodies and at the same time they tend the injured also. So on the fifth day, on the fifth day after the super cyclone, a military Helicopter, a military helicopter flew over the shelter and dropped food parcels. It didn't uh, return later, but they needed food. So the youth in the crowd gathered empty utensils. The children were made to lie in the sand with the utensils on their stomachs to indicate to passing helicopters that they needed food. That they needed food. The helicopter bought the messes and returned with food and other necessities for the crowd at the center. So you can imagine the condition of the people. How they suffered a lot. How they lost their life. How they lost their property. Even they are unable to get the food also. A large number of children. A large number of children had been orphaned. They lost their mother, father, their relatives, friends, everyone in this super cyclone. So what Prasad did, Prasad put them together under a polythene seat. The women in the center were deployed to look after the children and the man arranged food for everyone. A large number of children, a large number of children had been orphaned. They lost their mother, father, their relatives, friends, everyone in this super cyclone. So what Prasad did, Prasad put them together under a polythene seat. 
The women in the center were deployed to look after the children and the man arranged food for everyone. So the sadness of the sadness of this orphan children and women in the center was growing with each passing day. Prasant requested, Prasant requested to work in the NGO called that is food for work. In order to keep the children busy, he organized sports events for them. He took help of other volunteers to help the widows and the orphans to return to their normal lives. The government had proposed, proposed to set up separate institutions for the widows and orphans. But this process, this proposal was successfully rejected by Prasant. He felt that these uh, separate institutions would neither help the orphan children nor would they be beneficial for the widows also. These volunteers wanted, these volunteers wanted to settle the orphan children and widows in foster families where they would get love and at the same time security. After six months of this disaster, Prasant has come out of the grief of losing his mother because he was engrossed. He was engrossed in helping others that he forget his pain. All the widows and our fans looked to him in a, in a time of grief and so. So he learned to come out of his gloom and smile. So weathering the storm in Irsama, do you think the title is justified here? The title can be interpreted on two levels. First, literally facing a cyclic storm and second, facing emotional attachments. In this story, we find both aspects as we read the remarkable story of Prasant, a survivor of the super cyclone, and which, which, ha which happened in the year 1999. So he lost uh, several family members and friends in the storm, but showed immense courage and resourcefulness to ensure that the survivors, the survivors did not have to wait and depend on government help, but they can take care of their own needs themselves. So here in this uh, lesson, we get a great character. And who is that character? Prasant. Prasant, he showed remarkable leadership qualities by organizing the rest of the youngsters and elders in a group. He provided food to the other victims and helping them to work out to the solution of their situation. He was very intelligent. He was very intelligent, very brave. As he had met the children lie down on the sand and put the utensils on their stomach to case the attention of the rescue helicopters. Which, which flew around the sky to provide food or with the food supplies. He persuaded, he persuaded the women to start working to supply food for themselves and others. And most importantly, he brought the orphans and widows together to mutually benefit each other. So what is the theme of this uh, chapter that is uh, weather in the storm in Islam. So when a natural calamity like a storm takes place, people are put to a lot of suffering. Apart from the help of the government provides, the member of the community should also mobilize themselves to solve their problems. So in this story, we see how a young boy, hardly 19 years old, takes the initiative steps and helps the members of his community to stand on their feet. His leadership qualities are praiseworthy. So what is the message we are getting from this story? So the lesson, the lesson conveys the message that when a natural calamity strikes, the members of the community should help themselves. 
they should not be totally dependent upon the government to provide help okay it also gives the message that the youth like prasant they have a major role to play in organizing the community to help themselves you should provide a leadership role to solve the problems of the common people in this lesson we see we see the leadership we see the leadership provided by prasant during the super storm in odisha village we should specially concentrate our efforts on women and children who form the most vulnerable sections of the society so i hope my dear students you have understood this lesson This lesson is about our Odisha. Okay.